Hello, and welcome to the Scientific Adventure of the Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com titled Universal Gravitation. It's in the topic of circular and satellite motion. So let's start by talking a little bit about gravity here. Most of you are familiar with the story of Isaac Newton sitting under a tree, getting hit in the head with an apple, and going, oh, gravity exists. Well, you've been misrepresented that story a little bit, because it's actually probably true that the very first person who tripped over a rock and fell flat on their face figured out that gravity existed pretty darn quick. Um, so we all knew forever that people fall and things fall when they're dropped. It didn't take a genius like, Ein like Einstein or Isaac Newton uh, to figure that out. Because, um, of course, Isaac Newton was the one that did that. So it has to do with him holding up his, his little spyglass here. Um, according to the rest of the legend, it goes that the apple fell on his head. He looked up through the leaves of the tree and saw the moon. And he began thinking, this thing that we all know, gravity pulls things towards the earth. Maybe it's universal. Maybe it's also what keeps the moon in orbit around the earth and keeps the earth in orbit around the sun and so forth and so on. It's between any two pieces of mass. So he began to do some calculations and here we have a uh, planet beard man and the sun. Okay. And if, if he, he did some calculations, he figured out that if we uh, use the mass of one object, sometimes you'll see this listed as M1, sometimes as capital M and M2, You'll see the, the one doing the orbiting is often the, just an M if you use the capital M series. Otherwise, either one could be M1 and M2. And the distance between them makes a big difference as well. Okay, so those three factors are going to tie into our equation here. But what he said was it's not just universal or planetary bodies that have gravity. He said it's any two pieces of mass. So it turns out my wife and I are connected and attracted not just by love, but by gravity. And the mass of my wife and the mass of me and the distance between us could be used to calculate the force between us. Now for my wife and I, it's probably gonna be a 10 millionth of a Newton, which is pretty darn small. But for the uh, earth and the sun, it's gonna be a very, very large number, enough to accelerate the earth into a circle around itself. All right, so here's the equation without any further ado. So universal gravitation, we see the equation right here. And this is where it's written the way it's written in the concept builder here. In other places like positive physics, you'll see it listed as capital M, lowercase m. Once again, primarily when we're talking about something like the sun and the earth or the earth and the moon. Um, then the bigger object has the capital M. All right, uh, but in this case, uh, in any of these cases, the force here is just the force of gravity that attracts the two masses. So what pulls them together? What pulls the earth and the sun together? What pulls my wife and I together? Capital G here is the gravitational constant. I like to say that was set when the universe was created, it was set as to how strong gravity is in our universe. You notice the units are a little bit complicated here. Um, but that determined how strong gravity would be. Is everything just going to clump together really quick and almost instantly? Is it going to take a while to drift together? All of that has to do with the force of gravity, which has to do with the gravitational constant. Then the two masses we already talked about are the masses of the first object, mass of the second object, and D is the distance between them. Uh, let me jump back here real quick because I forgot to mention um, when we use D and when we use R. So typically in this situation, because we've got a planet here, planet Beard Man, orbiting the sun, we would use the radius because it's the radius of the orbit. Okay, um, or if you were standing on a planet or something or on the sun, uh, it would be the radius of the sun. So that's where the R comes from. It's definitely more uh, universal to say D because D is just any distance, the distance between the two objects, whether it's a radius or not. So either way, whether you see it written like this or like this, you can plug the, you just plug in the distance between the two objects.
Okay, notice that it is squared. That's going to become pretty important here in just a moment. All right, the goal of this uh, concept builder is to recognize the relationships between the mass and the force and the other mass and the force and the distance between them and the force. So let's talk about mass first. If we make the numerator bigger here, if we were to double this number, then this would get twice as big. That lets us know that these are uh, directly proportionally, directly proportional or have a linear relationship. So in other words, whatever we do to one of them, and if whatever we do to the mass, we have to use the same factor to change the force. If this is divided by six, we have to divide that by six. Uh, and the same thing's true of the other mass. So if we change this mass and we multiply it by four, make it four times bigger, I eat a whole lot of cheeseburgers and now my mass is four times bigger, then the force of gravity between me and any other object would be four times greater. And the distance between the two objects, distance between the two objects is in the denominator. So that means if D gets bigger, that means we're dividing by a bigger number. That means the force will get smaller, which should make sense to us because uh, you can think of it kind of like holding two magnets. If you make the magnets farther apart, the force gets weaker. Okay. Now it doesn't get weaker at a linear rate. It gets uh, weaker at a quadratic rate because we have that squared there. So if the distance between the objects is times two, well, times two squared is times four, so this would be four times bigger. If it was divided by three, if the distance was divided by three, they got closer. Well, closer would mean more force. If it gets divided by three, now we've got nine here and we do the opposite. So if this was divided by three or divided by nine for the squared part, this is gonna be nine times bigger. And we see that we can write that here. F is proportional to the inverse of the square, sometimes called the inverse square law. If you want just a moment of why that is, if you picture like gravitons, which may or may not exist, spreading out from an object, they spread out in a sphere, kind of like blowing up a balloon. And as you make the radius of the balloon bigger, the surface area of the balloon gets bigger by the square of the radius. Okay, you can look up the surface area of a balloon and figure that out. But that has to do with why it happens as best we understand it. Okay, um, so let's go through a few examples here. So in the apprentice level, you're only gonna deal with the mass changing. So when the mass changes by a factor divided by six, the force changes by the same factor the force would be divided by six. And if you have both things changing, then just change it based on one and then change that based on the next one. Let's do an example where we have to change it twice. So we see objects one and two attract each other with a gravitational force of 36 units. If the mass of object one is halved and the mass of object two is tripled, then the new gravitational force will be Okay, so let's get a pen here. So we're starting out with 36 units. Let's just say it's Newtons because Newtons are our typical unit of force. And we see that the mass of object one is halved. That means we took object one and we divided it by two. And I would encourage you to think of it as divided by two instead of halved. So if this side is divided by two and we have a linear relationship, then the force is going to need to be divided by two. So let's go ahead and divide it by two. That gives us 18 newtons, 36 divided by two. Now we see mass of object two is tripled. So this one is tripled. That means times three. Since they're linear, they have a linear relationship or directly proportional, it means we're going to do the same thing to the other one. So now we take our new number and multiply it by three. And that gives us three times 18 is 54 Newtons. And so that would be our answer here, 54 Newtons. All right, keep in mind, if you just change one, you just do half of that. All right, let's move on to the next uh, level here. So in the next level called diluted by distance, you can guess we're changing the distance now. When the factor, when the distance changes by a factor, so we change the distance by some factor, divide by six, the force changes by the square of the factor in the opposite direction. So if this was divided by six, 
squared to be divided by 36. Because it's inverse here, um, we would multiply that by 36. All right, so once again, this is inverse quadratic. And let's go ahead and get into a sample problem. All right, so objects 1 and 2 attract each other with a gravitational force of 45 units. So again, we'll go ahead and use Newton's. Um, of course, there are other units of force, but that's the one we commonly use. If the distance, and that's key, distance separating objects 1 and 2 is changed to one-third of the original value, then the new gravitational force will be blank units, or blank Newtons in this case. Okay, so down here, we changed by one-third. That's dividing by 3. But when we square that, that's like dividing by 9. Okay, and if we divide by 9, if we divide the denominator by 9, or the inverse part of this, that means we're going to have to multiply the force times 9, okay, which gives us 405 newtons. All right, so just make sure that you don't forget to square the factor and then don't forget to flip it to the opposite. Oppo, opposite. So instead of dividing, we multiplied. If you were multiplying down here, if you were multiplying down here, then make sure you divide up there. All right, on to the wizard level where we get to combine our two abilities, putting it all together. So now we will have mass one changing, mass two changing, and the distance changing. Sometimes it'll just be two of them. Sometimes it'll be all three. I picked one that has all three to make sure we step through the most complicated thing you'll get. So objects one and two attract each other with a gravitational force of 36 newtons. If the mass of object one is doubled, so mass one is doubled, so that's times two. Well, these are uh, linear relationships, so this one's going to be times 2. Okay, so now we're at 72 newtons. And the mass of object 1, mass of object 1 is tripled, so that's times 3. Because it's a linear relationship, this is going to be times 3. So times 3 again, and that will give us 216 newtons. And now the distance separating them is halved. That's divided by 2. We have to square that. So now we're looking at divided by 4. 2 squared is 4. And then we have to take the opposite. So divided by 4, the force is going to be multiplied by 4. If we put these things closer together, there's going to be more force attracting them. All right, so times 4, we get... 864, if I did my math right there in my head, let me double check it, 40, 20, yes, um, Newtons, and that would be the new gravitational force if all three of those changes happened. All right, enjoy doing the concept builder, work on these puzzles, try and figure it out. Remember, if there's more mass, there's going to be more attraction. If there is if they are closer together, there's going to be more attraction. So if you're finding you're going the wrong way, you made a mistake, go back and double check. If you got any questions, put them down in the comments. Otherwise, have a great day, and we'll catch you the next time on the Scientific Adventures of Beardman.